Hello my wonderful friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Wellbeing with Helena and if we are meeting for the first time, a very special welcome to you and to all my returning viewers, thank you so much for tuning in again, a special warm hug to all of you guys. On this channel I talk about medical school because I am a medical student but I also talk about passions of mine such as mental well-being, physical well-being and emotional and spiritual well-being too. And today I am delivering a video on a well-being topic um, and it's more of a think piece on modern loneliness. Now more than ever there is a sense of loneliness and discord between people and if you clicked on this video I'm sure you will have felt it at some point or another. It's so prevalent that we call the modern day a loneliness epidemic. Yet we are the most interconnected as a society and a civilization as we've ever been. Particularly in big cities, it can feel so strange to be surrounded by people all the time, but to feel like nobody knows you. Because there are so many of us, it would feel weird to say hello to every single passerby. And so we put in headphones, ignore each other on the tube, and if we catch someone's eye, we quickly look away instead of smiling. If this resonates with you and you've had this kind of experience, then please give the video a thumbs up so that this topic can reach others who feel the same way. This video is to anyone who feels lonely at the moment, has felt lonely or isolated in the past, feels like an outsider or a misfit, and to all of you who feel like no one gets you. I hope to bring you some food for thought on why we feel so lonely in the modern world and in the modern day when we're super interconnected as a society and how to feel less lonely and bring more of a sense of togetherness into the world and into our society. Lauv, I think it's Lauv, might be Lauv, Lauv I think, wrote a song called Modern Loneliness and that song is a bit of a gut punch. The lyrics really exemplify to me what our current day society is really like. These lyrics go, modern loneliness, we're never alone, but we're always depressed. Love my friends to death, but I never call and I never text. Does that ring true to you? We have people so accessible to us through technology, but this medium and interface for talking to others just really doesn't do quite the same thing when it comes to seeing someone's face realizing their emotions. I think now is also an exceptionally good time to talk about this topic because with coronavirus and lockdown, we have all essentially had to isolate ourselves with phone calls and FaceTime becoming the primary way of communicating with our friends and family. Where I could normally talk to someone for hours and hours, FaceTime is a little bit more tricky and my engagement just isn't as strong. So why do we feel this sense of longing for other humans, for social connection, social cohesion? Well, it's unanimous across disciplines, biology, sociology, psychology, that we are a social species. And what that means is that whilst we have our physical needs, our biological needs like food, shelter, warmth, water, we also have social needs. And these are things like being seen and heard by others, having our emotions validated and discussed, and working together for common purposes and being of service to each other like we would have done ancestrally as a tribe. It's no secret, great philosophers of the past have always spoken out about how life is not about money or status or power or material possessions. It's about human connection. It's about finding purpose in serving others. It's about finding love in the world and other people. And that doesn't have to be in a partner intimately and romantically. It can be in friends. It can even be in the kind gestures from strangers. Have you ever noticed that when we ask each other, what do you think makes a good person or what are my best traits? The ultimate praise is that you're kind, you're generous, you're honest. And all of these words are about how you treat other people. That tells us that something that we value the most and is a cornerstone in our human society, whether or not we know it, is human interaction, human love, human connection. I often turn to our evolutionary history and our ancestral lifestyles to understand why the modern day can feel so difficult, like I did in my video on dealing with stress and anxiety in the modern world, which I will put here. I'm not sure which side it comes up. And feeling lonely when we're surrounded by people seems to be another one of those things that can be explained by looking at our ancestry and how our civilization has advanced so rapidly and essentially we haven't evolved to deal with the way that our society has advanced so far so fast. Nowadays it is not necessary on us to lean on each other as a society and community to build our civilization. 
we don't need each other as much. There isn't so much trading going on. And business and technology allows us to go through our day without even having to talk to anyone. If we need something, we can order it online. We don't even have to leave the house. We can work from home. And a lot of what we're doing now is on computers, dealing with numbers and facts and statistics. And in the corporate world in particular, there's the sense that you might be working alongside others, sitting at desks next to you, but that you're not working together. The work we're doing is not always for other people. It doesn't necessarily touch other people's lives and that can leave this feeling of loneliness and hollowness because that is why people still want to enter the outward facing professions like medicine, like teaching, like, like the emergency services. But no matter what you do, no matter how many people are around you or how many connections you may have, you can still feel lonely. The number of people around you and the number of connections that you have accessible to you does not equate to how lonely you feel. We may think that if you are married and cohabiting that how could you feel alone? How could you feel lonely? But if you feel estranged from the person that you're closest to, no matter their physical proximity, you will feel lonely. The same goes for having large groups of friends. You could spend time with all of these smiling faces, but if you feel alienated from them, you will still feel lonely. So what can we do to feel less lonely? First things first, turn alone time into solitude, not loneliness. Find ways to make alone time blissful and peaceful and to not associate being alone with these feelings of negativity that loneliness has the connotations of. When you're alone, you can do things at the pace you want to do them. You can make that weird meal that only you like. You can read that book or watch that film that is a little bit eccentric and that other people might not indulge you with, but it's something that you have an interest in. This doesn't completely combat the need for socializing, but it can help you to alleviate feelings of despair and loneliness. You can also spend this time to figure out what it is that you're missing, whether it's a friendly discussion, an intimate partnership, or more integration with the groups and people you already know. In your alone time, you can figure out what it is that you want, make some plans and thoughts on how you can improve your social circles, and then make steps towards that when you are not alone. Next, take steps to connect yourself to people more. It doesn't have to be immersing yourself in really large groups of people. You can start small, doing things like making more plans with your friends and family, even if it's just coffee or a phone call. Start conversations with people at work. Be more naturally inquisitive and curious about other people's lives. Take a minute to chat to the people that you might bump into. Talk to people over the counter, talk to people at the hairdressers. Book into exercise classes or workshops or join volunteering programs. Let me also emphasize that if you are feeling lonely, the prospect of interacting with other people can feel kind of scary. And the reason for that is because if you already feel lonely, the concept that you could talk to someone else and that maybe they reject you or that you lose that friendship could perpetuate your loneliness further. I hope that makes sense. But that is just apprehension and that is just fear. And people crave human interaction, so don't be scared when reaching out to people and starting up these conversations. Leading on from this, I want for you to understand how to handle situations where people do f make you feel alienated, where people don't necessarily agree with your beliefs or validate your emotions. Often what we need is for someone to let us release our emotions to them and then to say that's understandable and to validate them, to check them for us. So when we express the depths of our soul to someone and they don't agree with us or they don't think that our emotions are valid, it can feel almost more lonely than if we didn't express them in the first place. So what can we do about that? First of all, we need to foster meaningful relationships with people who actually care. Not the people who are just breadcrumbing you on social media, who might reply to your texts, but never wants to meet up. We need to find friends who actually do want to meet up with us in the cafe and explore similar issues. And remember that friends and acquaintances can crop up in any age group in any place. They don't have to be anyone in particular, they just need to be someone who cares. Then I want to explain how to deal with rebuff. And what I mean by rebuff is when someone doesn't see the world as the same way we do, they may not agree with our worldview or our desires and they may not understand our issues. First off, if someone is not appreciating your emotional response to a situation, they are not allowed to dictate how you feel. Every single person's experience of life and how we respond to things that happen to us are personal. Your experience of life is yours and it's not up for debate. If you feel something, you feel it. If someone is not able to appreciate and respect your emotions, 
then consider them a few steps behind you. This is something that they need to learn. Next, when someone doesn't understand your deep and personal desires when you share them, I want you to remember this. Everyone wants to be happy, but there's no universal recipe for happiness. And what makes one person happy may be extremely different from what makes you happy. But people go on the assumption that there is a universal recipe for happiness and that what makes them happy will probably make you happy. For example, someone may express the worldview that everyone should be in a relationship and because they have a successful one, they'll try and they push that idea onto others and steer you towards being in a relationship when you may be completely happy and comfortable on your own. This happens in all domains of life, whether it's your career decisions, your personal decisions, where you live, what you wear. People will encourage you to do what would make them happy because to them, that's what happiness is. It's no one's fault, it's just that people believe that their version of reality and their version of happiness must be universal because it's what does it for them. This can be a point of contention when your closest friends and family don't necessarily agree with the things that you want in life or that make you happy. And this can of course bring about feelings of loneliness and being misunderstood in the world that you're in. And so let me tell you that you need to do what makes you happy and sometimes to work that out you need to listen to yourself and stop listening to advice from others. The only person that you should be taking advice from is someone who is where you want to be. Whether or not that's in a high power professional career or an athlete or an Instagram model, an influencer, a critically acclaimed author, a world renowned doctor. Whatever you want to be, whoever you want to be, the person who is where you want to be is the person that you should be taking notes from. Do not take advice from people who have a life that you wouldn't want to live yourself. I'm not saying to ignore all the things that your friends and family say to you, of course, but what I'm saying is that when it comes to making big life decisions and your career and your home and things that really will affect you and no one else in particular, you need to listen to what's in here and not what other people are telling you. And further to this, there will be people out there who see things in a similar way to you, but you do need to seek them out. Whether it's someone whose podcasts you listen to, or YouTube videos you watch, or an unlikely friend that you made somewhere, hold on to these relationships, hold on to these people, and go to these places to have the discussions that you want to have, because it will make you feel less lonely. The world can feel overwhelming, and we all have different thoughts and perspectives and ideas about how life should be and how it works and I believe that through sharing these ideas and respecting other people's ideas about how the world works we can gain this feeling of connection again by working on common projects whether it be volunteering or in our workplace or as a family having common shared goals and projects can bring us this sense of community and so what is the opposite of loneliness? Professor John Cassiopo, who was a social neuroscientist and one of the world leaders in understanding loneliness said that just like hunger or thirst, you can't really have an opposite. Really not being hungry and not being thirsty should be normal, just like not being lonely should be normal. So let's be more curious and inquisitive about other people. Let's start up more conversations, make more plans and foster more of a sense of togetherness and community. Smile at people more on the tube, have discussions like this where we talk about loneliness as a normal thing, as something that everyone can experience and everyone can go through. If this topic really piqued your interest and you want to learn more about it, then you should definitely check out um, Professor Cassiopo's work and I'll put a link towards some of his work down below and similarly if you want to combat loneliness through being an activist about it I will put a link below to an article that I found when I was researching this video um, on ways that we can volunteer and um, work in befriending services and other organizations to prevent people from feeling so lonely. Everything we do has a ripple effect, so I'm hoping that through making videos like this it can touch your life and that it can help you to touch other people's lives too. And that's what makes this all worth it. So if this topic meant something to you and you want other people to hear this message and have these kind of conversations, then please do leave a thumbs up. And if you are interested in this conversation, also please leave me a comment because I love these conversations. I think everything should be a conversation. Also, please do share this video with anyone who you think could benefit from it. And of course, if you would like to see more from me, please subscribe. <laughs>
I'm sending you all lots of love and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again soon for more topics like this. Bye!